Good morning, students. Welcome to your week 10 video. I'm going to go over a few things that will help you uh, complete your assignments for this week. I know we had a rough couple of weeks trying to get our group theory projects done, and I know that that's hard to coordinate when we're not in person. So I really appreciate all your hard work. I trust that you were able to do that. And if you're still struggling with any part of that, please send me an email and we will arrange for some additional Zoom meetings for those of you who need some help with your group project. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and show you Blackboard today, and we'll go over a few things that you need to be aware of for this week. So I have it in student mode, so it should look exactly like yours when you log in. You'll notice, um, of course, everything has been set up in weeks, and so it's color-coded just like your syllabus, and so for these few weeks we were on theory. We were trying to explore any kind of educational theory that might relate to your topic for your paper. And there was a lot of options for that. If we remember, there's no right or wrong theory to use. There's lots of choices. And so you had some time to explore that. This week, we're gonna shift into writing, but we're at the very beginning stages of writing because we still have quite a ways to go. So you'll see the color turned green. When you get in here, Here's your directions. So first you're watching this video. Great job, you've already started. Uh, number two, you're going to be sure that your group theory presentation is complete and posted to the discussion forum. And there, there's always a easy link to it right here on the left when it, where it says discussion. So you can go there and check to make sure that your post is clearly there and everybody can see it. So if I go there, um, there should be group theory presentation. It looks like there's seven different posts in here. That's probably more than enough. I think probably a few people did extra. Oh, there we go. It's because there's replies. Great. So we have all four groups have posted their work. And remember, just one person has to post for you. Um, and you might not be in this section. You might be watching this um, for section two or three. That's okay. Um, but remember, it'll be very similar. There's probably, I think, four groups in each um, section, maybe five, depending. All right. So we'll go back here to week 10. Once your stuff is posted and you, you have a group member that is posted, as long as your name is on it, you'll get the credit for the whole group. And if there are any problems with your group presentation, don't worry, I will give you some time to revise it and fix it if necessary, if there's any major issues. Um, for example, one group had a part of their presentation that wasn't visible, there was a link that wasn't working, um, and they've been working on fixing that. So I will give feedback if there's something that's really um, really wrong that we need to fix. So there'll be time to arrange those things and revise if necessary. I imagine that by now you've got it all worked out, but if that happens, um, I will be lenient on that and give you time to fix it. The next thing you're gonna do is go back to that discussion forum and explore at least one other group theory presentation. Consider one that maybe you're still interested in, but you didn't end up joining. Um, that might give you some more sources for your paper. You could easily look through their presentation and find some sources that you think might be relevant. And you could look those up and cite them and that will save you a little bit of the work of seeking out additional sources. So you'd wanna reply and give them a little feedback. What did you like about their presentation? What did you learn? And, um, and that's pretty easy. So that's the first three steps for this week. Next, you're going to read the annotated bibliography directions and right here, they are in both Word and PDF format for you. So I'm gonna pull that up and show you what's in there. And we'll talk about how you can use that to get your annotated bibliography done. So when we take a look at this, the directions are very uh, clearly right here at the top. It is 100 points for this assignment. And this is a very easy 100 points because you've already done about 90% of the work here. Okay, so you've already found all your texts. You should have those saved into a Google Drive or somewhere uh, easily accessible. And um, you should be able to pull those up pretty easily and find them to use in your annotated bibliography. You probably also have already completed these uh, research article evaluations, these little charts, if you remember. Uh, you did those for all your research articles. So if you have those, that will also make your annotated bibliography much easier to complete. So let's take a look at these directions. It says, use all the sources you've gathered relevant to your topic to create a set of citations and summaries of sources for your paper. This is basically like the foundation for your paper. It's organizing all your materials ahead of time. If it were cooking and I was baking a cake, it would be getting all my ingredients out ahead of time instead of searching for them while I'm in the middle of creating the cake, right? So you wanna get all your materials ready, all your ingredients there, 
You want to have it all prepared so you are familiar with all your sources. And you may need to reread some of them. You might decide as you're going through these that one or two of them is not quite as relevant as you thought, or maybe you need an extra one and you found some great ones in um, one of your group members or another group member's presentation and you decide to add something, that's okay. That's, you have a whole week to explore this and decide what are your sources. You do need a total of 10. At least five of those need to be research articles. And those research articles could be a range of quantitative, qualitative, mixed methods, or sometimes you might even find a meta study. And a meta study is when the person who wrote it didn't do an original uh, piece of research, but they synthesized and summarized a whole bunch of other examples of research. That is still a form of research. So um, it might not be original research, but it is still a good uh, example of research that you can use in your paper. As long as all your research articles are not those kinds of studies, then it's fine for you to include one or two of those. Uh, you do need a total of 10 though, so the remaining five would be at least one of them uh, should be your theoretical text. And then the four additional ones could be anything you want. It could be another article. Um, so you don't have to have only five, you could have more than five. You could be videos. I know a lot of you have been watching some documentaries uh, for your theoretical text maybe. Um, you might have found um, a book chapter that you liked in that folder of theoretical texts and, and uh, resources. You might even go back to those original things you did in the first few weeks where you found some practical resources. Go back and take a look at those. You might have found some related to your topic and your TPE that are really helpful. All those things are relevant and you can use them in your paper. So you want to gather them all up and the goal is to create an APA citation. This is helpful that you do this early on because if you do this now, later on when you go to write your paper, it's going to make it a, a lot easier that you won't have to go back and search these search for these texts and figure out how to cite them. So there are some examples of citations down here and some examples of how to write your summary down here. Um, you can choose to use this this wording if you want to, but you don't have to. It's just there as an example if you're kind of lost and need some help getting started. Um, you can also very easily use what you already wrote in your research article evaluation. These sentences that you put as your answers here are very likely a, a good summary of that article, and you can put that right into your annotated bibliography. So um, I'm going to show you how I like to uh, do, do citations for annotated bibliographies. And this is not just um, busy work. I do annotated bibliographies for my papers. When I am going to publish an article, I do an annotated bibliography. It's a very good um, practice to get in the habit of when you're going to do any kind of writing. Okay, so uh, let me show you how I like to do it. And you'll see here on the directions, it says CiteFast uh, is a recommended website to use. There are tons of these out there, by the way. You don't have to use this one. If you have another one you're really comfortable with, you're welcome to go and use that. Um, I just, I prefer this one because I'm used to it. Um, so if you've never been using a citation machine of any kind, um, there are a lot of them online that are free to use. And um, this is my favorite. So it's real easy. You want to make sure you're an APA 7. Yes, we could go back in time and use uh, APA 6, but uh, we're not going to. We're going to go ahead and just move forward with 7. Um, and then you have your choices here. It says web page, book, journal, or other, and there's a lot of choices under the other here. So I'm going to go with journal because I'm going to do an example for you of how to fill this out. So let's pretend that um, I'm going to use a theoretical text that was available online and I'm gonna use this one by Ladson Billings. Many of us have read this one. It's a great article on culturally relevant pedagogy, um, a great theory that many people probably like. Um, and so let's say I'm gonna use this article here in my paper. And so therefore I want it in my annotated bibliography. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back here to CiteFast and I'm gonna show you how um, I can pull all that information and it will create my citation for me. All right, so first off, I'm gonna click manual. Uh, let me go back and show you why I do that. Um, if, I, if I didn't wanna do manual, um, I could try typing in the title and if it's a popular thing, uh, like a popular text, it might already have a citation that somebody saved in there, but you can't really completely trust it. It might not be accurate. So I prefer not to do that. So I go ahead and use manual and then I'm gonna put in the information right from the article. Okay, so I'm going to look at what's the author's first initial, and that would be G. Um, she doesn't have a middle one, so I'm going to skip that. 
And then she has the hyphenated last name. I'm gonna put that in there. And actually, I'm gonna make this a lot bigger so it's easier for those of you watching on a video there. It's much easier. There we go. And um, this is, even though I found it online, uh, if I look, let's see if, if I can't find a website or a URL, then I wanna use print, okay? So um, let me look here and, and check and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the article, often there are links to it, right? So right here you can see there is a link, so I can use that um, and I can say online and it'll ask me later um, how I found it and I can put that in, okay? But all this information here is what I'm gonna be inserting into this citation machine, okay? So I'm gonna go back here so you can see what I'm putting in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say online because there is access to it online. And the year it was published, this is kind of an older one, 1995. I'm feeling old. Uh, <laughs> all right, so article title toward a theory of culturally relevant pedagogy. Okay, now you'll notice I couldn't really copy and paste in there. And um, the reason is when I do that, sometimes the format gets all weird, but also um, when we put a title on an article, it's gonna have capital letters because that's how you appropriately would put a title. Um, but here, um, when we actually cite it, we don't want all those capital letters. You'll notice that it says it should be in sentence case, which means you capitalize only the first word. Okay, so we're gonna just leave it like that. The journal title, if I come back here, I can show you how to find that. Um, so the journal title might be something like this up top. Um, and if you're not sure, you wanna scroll through and see, um, often it'll say at the top uh, of the header, American Educational Research Journal. So that's where this came from. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my citation machine. Notice that now I can put the capital letters because I'm doing the title of the journal. It's gonna ask me which volume and which issue. Sometimes, occasionally you'll have an article that doesn't have that information. Um, it almost always does, but if it doesn't, just skip over it, okay? Um, this one happens to have it, so I can see right here it says volume 32, number three. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there on my research um, or citation machine, that, rather. So let me show you that. So I put in the volume and the issue and pages. Now, the reason it asks for page numbers, you might think, well, why would it have page numbers if it's a digital document? Um, and why do the page numbers matter? Well. It matters because um, these are originally, these were all journals that were hard copy. <laughs> so before we had access like to these big databases like we, we use now, um, many years ago, they would send colleges these hard copy journals. So they were like magazines, but for academia. And they would be these, these nice uh, little hard copy or um, flimsy paperback kind of magazines that had research in them and they were in volumes and then they would come out in different editions. And because of that, every new, uh, every new volume would pick up where it left off uh, from the previous edition, right? So you would, you'd have these giant page numbers um, and they might come out in big sets. And so the page numbers are still representative of that. I don't really know why we haven't um, gone past that when most journals are online now, but they still ask for it, right? Because it might be easier to find for someone, you never know if they're using a different method to track down this article. And the whole purpose of providing a citation is that if someone else wants to go check where you got your information, they should be able to find it. So we wanna put as much information as we can find. So I am gonna put these page numbers here that are listed, All right? So I'm gonna come back over here and put my page numbers. 465 through 491. Okay, so now it's asking me about that, that web address if I have one. So let me go back here and find that. All right, I'm gonna use this right here. Most of the time you can copy and paste it and it comes out okay. If not, you might have to retype it, you never know. I'm gonna try it. Oh, and it worked just fine. So now that I've got all this information in here, I'm going to go ahead and save the citation. 
And you'll notice over here, it makes a nice little box full of references for me. And it has the citation already created. I could also use in text later on if I want to save this. Um, I could go back and look at how to cite it in my paper, but I'm not at that point yet. I just want my references. So another thing that you're going to want to see uh, on Blackboard that will help you. Let me go back. I'm going to save this citation and use it uh, in a little bit. So I'm going to click on it, copy and paste. It's going to pull it up and it's actually formats it nicely for you. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And let me show you where you're going to want to paste that to. So if I come back here to Blackboard, um, there's actually a template that I can download. And this template is very simple and straightforward. It's really, um, you didn't need my help with that, but I just wanted to provide a little extra step for you to help you out. Um, and if you come here, this is what it looks like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my first citation in. And um, I want to probably merge the formatting. Yeah, that'll be fine. It changed my, um, my numbering, that's okay. All right, so I have to move this down. All right, so it gave me my citation and this is exactly what I will put in my references page later on when I go to write my final paper. And so that's already there for me. This got moved around, let me fix that. And so when you download this template, all you gotta do is replace this with your name, replace this with the topic of your paper, do all your citations first and then go back and review your sources and write a short summary. So the summary should be easy because you've already read it, but you might want to go back and go over um, the paper or the article or the website or whatever it is again um, and, and do a short summary. The summary should only be a few sentences. It's a very short, concise paragraph. It's not meant to be anything um, long and detailed, okay? So you'll replace that with a, a short paragraph. And once you're all done, that's all you need to do. It's a real straightforward assignment. So let me come back here to Blackboard and make sure that everybody understands what else they need to do. It's a very uh, simple week. I think um, we could all use that now at this point. So we've been working a lot on that group theory presentation. Um, I moved the journal from last week to this week because I know some of you have already done it and that's fine, but uh, many of you were waiting because we're, we, we had an extension on that uh, group a theory presentation project. So many of you were waiting till everybody had theirs up. So that's fine. I went ahead and moved it here. If you already did it, don't bother to do it twice. Um, but if it's if you haven't, there it is again. Um, and that's the only thing aside from your annotated bibliography. I'm going to put a Dropbox in here. Um, it looks like it's not uh, available yet, but I will open that up for you. And then that is all you'll have to do by Friday is complete that annotated bibliography. I suggest that you take your time on it because I wanna make sure that you have really carefully picked out your, your references that you're going to use in this paper. If they don't help you answer your research question, then they're probably not a good text to use. Okay, so go back to your research question, look at it carefully, decide if all of these texts are helping you answer it or not. And if you're not sure if they're gonna help you answer it, that's okay, you could still ditch it later if you decide you pick something and you don't really like it. Um, but I also included a little guide for you to start planning out your paper. Um, there's nothing to turn in. I just want you to kind of take a look at this and this should help you organize yourself and start thinking about whether or not um, you have a good thesis statement planned out. Um, and if you think your, your sources are all gonna help you answer that research question, and then it gives you some ideas for how you might organize your paper. And you could start thinking about how you wanna outline it or plan it out. Okay, and that is it for this week. I will post some options for additional office hours if we have enough requests. If we only have a couple, then I'll just meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you feel like you need lots of help or you wanna meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, just specify that in an email. And um, I'm really proud of all the hard work you've been doing. Thank you for watching and keep up all the good work. Have a great week.